Hello. In this video, we would like to calculate the de Broglie wavelength for an electron going at exactly the same speed as the Jamaican sprinter Usain Bolt was going when he ran his world record time for the 100 meter dash. In that particular video, we calculated uh, Mr. Usain Bolt's uh, velocity to be 10.438 meters per second. So in this case, we're assuming we have an electron, and every electron has the same mass of 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. We're assuming the electron is moving at exactly the same velocity as Mr. Bolt was. And we would like to calculate the de Broglie wavelength in this particular case. So recall that the first thing we always need to do to calculate the de Broglie wavelength is to calculate the momentum. And we know that the momentum is going to be the mass times the velocity. And we know the mass of electron is going to be 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And we know that the velocity, in this case, it was going just as fast as the sprinter was during his world record time. It's going to have a velocity of 10.11 438 meters per second. And once we do this calculation, we get that the momentum of the electron is going to be 95.09 times 10 to the minus 31 kilogram meters per second. So we see the momentum of the electron is far lower than it was for the sprinter. So now we can use the de Broglie relationship, which recall is that the associated wavelength is going to be Planck's constant h divided by the momentum. And in this particular case, the values are going to be 6.626 uh, times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds for the Planck's constant h. And we know our momentum is going to be 95.09 times 10 to the minus 31 kilogram meters per second. We know from our previous calculation that this combination of units reduces simply down to meters. And the numerical value is going to be 6.58 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. Now this is a far bigger uh, distance than we saw for the sprinter himself. 10 to the minus 5 meters is actually relatively large. Our point of comparison is generally one angstrom 10 to the minus 10 meters. That's a convenient number to remember because the distance of atoms from each other in a molecule is on the order of one or two angstroms. So the distance of a carbon atom from another carbon atom in a molecule will be approximately 10 to the minus 10 meters. That's a significantly enough large distance that we would see quantum mechanical effects. Here, 6.58 times 10 to the minus 5 is about 10,000 times as big as that distance. Moreover, this is roughly the size of a bacterium. So, if we had two bacteria next to each other, the wavelength of this electron is such that we'd be uncertain as to whether the electron was on the leftmost bacteria or the rightmost bacterium. So that is a sufficiently large distance that quantum mechanical effects would be very, very noticeable. So we see that once we get down to the size of electron, the de Broglie wavelengths that are associated with those particular objects get to be large enough that quantum mechanical effects become important. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.